terrified of a plane crash because someone else is in the driver's seat, not us. But of course, crashes do happen to all of us all the time. A moment from our nightmares, trapped inside a crashed car, a horror many of us will experience in our lifetime. John. But the reality is we stand a much better chance of surviving something like this because of the knowledge gained through investigating real-life crashes. Have you got any CM bleeding? You went round the brine at all? Just keep your head as still as you can, OK, John? Keep it perfectly still. Some right. questions. I don't want to nod your head. I want you to say yes or no. In order to really understand the causes of injuries, it takes what we call a multidiscipline effort, people from a variety of backgrounds working together. We've been very fortunate uh, in the last 10 years in working with physicians such as the doctors up at Maryland Shock Trauma. They understand injury mechanisms. They understand what it takes to break a bone or to perforate a liver. We understand, of course, motor vehicle crashes. This close liaison between crash detectives and surgeons means that it is now possible to predict just what kinds of injury patterns will occur in an accident. If you're on the outboard side of a rollover and you end up getting the centrifugal force in the whiplash, even though you're well belted, you may end up with your head driven into the roof. But it's not the classic storytelling that some of our other crashes are where you can look at a set of x-rays on a patient and turn around and speak to the ambulance uh, or, or, or emergency medical provider and tell them what the car looked like. If the risks of death and serious injury are to be reduced still further, then we have to have a better understanding of exactly what happens to the person inside the car. Watch when you can, I want to do a secondary survey. There are three collisions. And the first is the collision uh, of the automobile with an object. And now a body, uh, the pure model would be unrestrained, has a second collision with the inside of the automobile. And the third collision is the one where the injuries are truly caused. And that's the co collision with the internal organs of the body who then go forward and collide with the body wall. That's where the injury often truly occurs. It's in that third collision. There are also issues of pure intrusion, like parts of the car going into the body. Are you married at all, John? No, you're not. You have a girlfriend. Okay, cut things down. All right. She wasn't in the car with you at all. Was she? You were on your own, weren't you? I'll just try and check you over as much as I can. From your head to your toes, all right? The injury patterns which occur in real-world crashes can't easily be duplicated in the laboratory. Crash test dummies are sophisticated and expensive, but when all said and done, they're made of inflexible plastic. They don't behave like a real human being caught completely off guard, you will replicate how many of the dummies are set up in, in the vehicle research institutes, sort of upright, 50th percentile dummy, standard weight, standard height. Unfortunately, most of us have some feeling that a frontal accident is going to occur, and we tend to brace our lower extremities. The accident occurs, either the pa patient is launched forward or the tow pan and floorboard come towards him. And if, if I can use my shoe as a model for the whole foot, we find the foot laying up alongside the leg. And it told me a story. At the moment of impact, I was stuck, the foot somewhere, and the rest of the body bypassed me and exited the skin, collected the environment, and recoiled back a bit and came in, although usually the foot, in the worst cases, is here. John, we're just going to bend your feet back, OK? Okay, help all right. Any what discomfort, let us know. All right, oh, if you have any pain, let me know straight away. By having that team with me, 
in other words, the person responsible for pulling that patient from the wreck, they would say, yes, we had 25 minutes of extraction time at the scene, and it was because of just what you've described. That pattern recognition has brought itself from the clinician, through the accident reconstruction, back to the basic scientist, and hopefully the loop there continues to the automobile manufacturer who either duplicates that in their own lab or takes the data at face value and changes the vehicle. Injuries to the brain are the single greatest cause of death and disability in road traffic accidents. The injuries are caused when the brain is forced violently against the inside of the skull. Just trying to keep that head in that neutral position all the time, okay, John? We don't want to move that head. Okay, keep it perfectly still. The brain, unfortunately, when there's an impact, will continue to move. When that brain moves, there are various uh, uh, modes of deformation that occur in the brain. The brain actually distorts and moves, and those distortions and motions cause a variety of different injuries. If you consider a string between two plates and you move the two plates apart, the string stretches. There are portions of the brain that actually end up moving apart like this. And those strings that stretch are the axons. They're the communicators between neuron, neurons, neural cells. And if that communication is lost, your thinking is lost. Your function is lost. Sometimes you may get hit frontally, uh, but uh, the injury is in the back. The brain is suspended in a fluid, water-like fluid, when the brain moves away from the back of the skull, that fluid cavitates or effectively boils and creates bubbles. And these bubbles then collapse on the surface of the brain and actually pit the brain, put a hole in the brain, as you would with a hose of fast water into dirt. What we do is uh, we try to understand the mechanisms of brain injury so that uh, we can uh, provide technology and science to help uh, build uh, safety restraints, seat belts and airbags. All this research goes into improving the driver's chances. Ultimately, it's translated into safer cars. Investigators can point to their lasting achievements. Seat belts, crumple zones, side impact bars, shatterproof glass, and the airbag. And looking at the airbag, we see a beautiful lipstick print right here. We call it the kiss of life. We're assuming it was a woman because of the lipstick, although you can't always be sure even of that. But we could say she's probably a mid-sized woman and that she was a, in position, in a normal position at the time of the deployment because her face was approximately in the center of the airbag. Since the airbags have been placed into the vehicles, we've seen a whole different kind of uh, pattern. People are alive today that wouldn't normally be alive. So now instead of focusing on uh, head and chest, severe trauma, we're now starting to look at extremity trauma, lower legs being fractured, and uh, lower extremity fractures such as uh, fractures of the femur into the hips, because the airbags are actually working and protecting the occupants. Yeah. Right, John, feel that fresh air. You'll be out in a two sex now, mate. Okay, okay, right, where do you want him to go? Out to you, to The extrication carried out by these firefighters has been a training exercise. Okay, tell me everyone's ready. Ready. You're ready. Okay, John, on three. One, two, three, and slide. Okay, John. The methods used have only been developed because of the work of the car crash detective. Okay, and rest and lie the casualty down. People are as God made them, and very often worse than that. But the fundamental thing is that just because people cause accidents most of the time, it doesn't mean to say that the best way to prevent and diminish accidents is to try and do something about the driver. What you can do is make the highway system, make the highway design, the roadways better, make the vehicles better, and that way you have much better and more cost-effective solutions than the traditional attempts of trying to change behavior, which by and large have been shown to be a waste of money. Back in Maryland, the police are wrapping it up. The dead man was Harry Axelrad, a 25-year-old investment broker.